What the hell is that? I just shot a musket round. <laughs> that was like a Civil War era blunderbuss shell. Two years ago, I was forced to review a gun I didn't want. I planned on taking the Thunder Ranch Combat Shotgun course. I'm sorry, the world famous Thunder Ranch Combat Shotgun course. And I wanted to use a semi-auto. So I called Beretta. I asked them for a Benelli M4. Instead, they send me the Beretta 1301. All I knew of the 1301 at the time was that it was a shotgun with a solid operating system, but it had a couple of odd quirks and it wasn't really making any waves back then. Beretta told me that they addressed the issues with the very first shotguns that came into the US. This one was different. Why would I believe that? Marketers are liars and that's coming from a lawyer. So what do I do? I order the lowest quality shotgun ammo I can find to use in this course to make Beretta regret sending me the 1301 and not the M4 that I wanted, like a child, a man child. In fact, if you look at some of these old clips, it looks like I'm shooting a goddamn brown bass. There's smoke all over the place. The Beretta 1301 ran flawlessly anyways, and I still have that shotgun today. It's right over there. I love it. It's one of my favorite shotguns, maybe one of my favorite guns of all time. My review, it gets well over a million views. The Beretta 1301 explodes in popularity. Everyone loves it. Price goes up tremendously because of the demand. Well, that's when Beretta USA wisely introduces the A300 Patrol, which is $500 cheaper than the 1301. Both are tactical semi-auto shotguns competing against each other directly. The 1301, I think, is the better shotgun, but the A300 is one of the best shotguns you can buy today. And it integrates some features that the 1301 lacks. I've already made at least two videos directly comparing these guns, but two of the main advantages that the A300 has over the 1301 includes ease of loading through the beveled loading port and the outstanding grippy full-length handguard with M-lock slots, giving you the ability to mount a light in a sling right out of the box. I'm willing to bet that the A300 is selling about as well as the 1301, considering you're getting 90% of the gun for 60% of the price. But today, the 1301 strikes back. Beretta's released the 1301 Mod 2. Gosh darn, I do love shooting a quality semi-automatic shotgun. I promised myself this would just be a quick overview. I got Chacho -cha coming up, I got a lot going on, but I ended up thrashing my new 1301 this morning at the neutral ground gun company just to make sure it's reliable i mean it's 1301 i know i'm not going to have any problems but we have a bunch of crappy thrown away ammo from our buddies at the guns and gear store in minnesota they sent thank you adam for sending all this crap in we're going to run all this shit through the 1301 real quick just to make sure that they're keeping things up to spec in italy I ended up running this thing like a rental today. It literally right now smells like Mephistopheles butthole. The good news is it's still a 1301. It is a 1301. It's lightweight. It's nimble. One of the lightest recoiling shotguns that I've encountered. It's like the 1301 Paradox. And it's got the blink operating system, which still may be the fastest in the industry. So what does the Mod 2 get you. Officially, you get the seven round mag tube with the option to add further extensions. I say officially because Beretta made somewhat of a soft update to the 1301 about a year ago to add this feature to your out of the box 1301. The best new feature on this one that's a new new feature is the integration of the Pro Lifter, something that my good friend Ernest Langdon has been doing on his custom 1301s for a while now. It's a $70 part that's been sold out for a bit on Beretta's website because it's a wonderful upgrade. Essentially, when the gun's ready to load, the shell lifter raises when the bolt's closed, meaning that you don't have to shove the lifter out of the way whenever you're inserting new shells, and it eliminates thumb bite. That is, the lifter won't close on your thumb like a Chinese finger trap whenever you're reaching for a new shell. This, to me, is the biggest upgrade that's coming out of the box in this version. Second biggest would be the furniture. I think one of my favorite improvements, I mean, the Pro Lifter is amazing, of course, but you can't overlook the simple things like this new handguard. Again, this is borrowed from the A300. 
fell in love with the A300 handguard whenever I first shot it. Not just because you get the ability to mount M-Lock accessories, but I like the checkering and I like the full length of it. It's just, it's the right amount of girth, if you know what I'm saying. And if you're doing a proper push-pull while you're shooting and you need that forward tension with your support hand, this works really, really well for that. And it makes this gun a dream to shoot. In addition to the handguard, the 1301 Mod 2 also features a new stock with more aggressive texture, this QD sling swivel point you see right here, and it is kickoff system compatible. The kickoff system allegedly reduces recoil by 44%. It does this, I'm pretty sure, by placing a tiny unicorn in the stock who will do a double gumdrop donkey kick to reduce recoil every time you fire the kickoff system. All right, I made that up because I don't know how the kickoff system really works. I, I know that it's in the competition guns and it's a, a cool upgrade and it's hydraulic, whatever that is. Anyways, it's like a $300 part that's really popular with competition shooters and you can use it in this now. Finally, it's got a recontoured trigger that I basically totally forgot about because I really can't tell that much of a difference. It's flatter. So good news, 1301 is even better. Bad news, higher MSRP starts at 1800, goes up to two grand. It's going to be available in the full rainbow of tactical teddy colors, including green, the lovely FDE here that looks almost as good as the green wolf gray or regular black with a straight stock or pistol grip. If you're watching this video, it means the shotgun is already out. Right now, you're probably wondering, okay, James, which one should I get? The A300, an old 1301, or this new Mod 2? Well, that all depends. If you want a really, 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 really good shotgun for half the price of the 1301 Gen 2, get the A300 and be on your way. If you want the best shotgun that you can buy, you're getting a 1301. If you want it fully featured out, you're getting the Mod 2. Just buy it. Add an optic, add a blue force gear tiger stripe sling whenever those drop at SHOT Show 2024, hint, hint, and a flashlight, and you're done. Certainly one of the older 1301s is still a good buy, but if you have to factor in the additional cost for the Pro Lifter, the SHOT tube extension, mounting point for a sling and a light, that's going to cut into your cost savings. So you're going to have to break out the calculator, do the math, to figure that out, what's going to work for you. Because I'm lazy, I'm getting the Mod 2, some of my favorite accessories, calling it quits. SHOT Show right around the corner, but I think we've already seen one of the more exciting guns that's going to be released this year, today. Speaking of, if you want to check out our full SHOT Show cornucopia, our coverage, make sure to go over, I'll show you my cornucopia, go over to our sister channel, TFB TV Showtime. We're going to start uploading videos to TFB TV Showtime in just a few days. You're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 80 videos that we are going to upload over the next couple of weeks from the show. Make sure you subscribe, check out TFB TV Showtime, but thanks for watching. Take care.